Hello, good evening, and welcome to another learning opportunity brought to you by Edward Educational Research Center. And we are indeed very grateful and excited uh, to have you here as we wait for our resource speaker to learn new things. And uh, he will be sharing to us to further advance our qualitative research capabilities. And before we would like to, uh, before we start, we would like to remind you of the following. Uh, we would like to request our participants to please um, situate yourself in a very quiet place for us to have a better experience of our learning session tonight. And of course, you have to mute your mic you know, to avoid uh, dis disrupting our uh, speaker for tonight. And of course, we would, like to, we would like you to pay attention since we are having a learning session. And of course, take notes of the sharing that our speaker will be giving to us tonight. And of course, participate for any activities or discussion that we will be having later on. And for us to have a better learning experience, I would like to formally commence our tonight's session with um, a short prayer. So I would like you to please um, join me in one spirit and please stand by for the playing of our Philippine National Anthem. Father, we praise and thank you for this day. You have given us another opportunity to appreciate life and to fulfill our mission as your instruments of peace and progress. Please pardon us for our shortcomings. Help us to amend our impieties. May we learn to pattern our lives through your Son's example. Father, bless all our endeavors, especially today's meeting. Guide us in our discussions, enlighten our minds in every decision that we make. Give us your grace that we may effectively do our parts as public servants. Bless our plans, programs, and projects so that we may achieve our objectives for your greater glory. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. There you go. Thank you so much for staying on the line. And once again, good evening and welcome to tonight's session, which is learning from others as the beginning of a relevant investigation, which is a sharing of a completed qualitative study. Again, I am Adrian P. Tamayo, your moderator for tonight's session. I am from Angela City National High School Master Teacher One. And so um, this event is actually not possible without the initiative of EDCOR Educational Research Center through its project Sagip Mananaliksik, and we would like to um, acknowledge our leaders, no? ating pong mga project coordinator. We have Dr. Bernadette L. Leharde, ang ating pong overall project coordinator ng project Sagip Mananaliksik, which is for everyone. And we also have Dr. Adrian Lawrence P. Carvajal, the overall project coordinator of project Sagip Mananaliksik one-on-one. -on -one. And also our head research consultant at, by, uh, of EDCOR, which is Dr. Richard D. Sanchez. All right, so without any further ado, I would like to invite my co-chair, 
um, Sir Cyril S. De La Fuente for the welcome message. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Am I audible, Sir Adrian? Loud and clear, sir. Thank you so much for the confirmation. Good evening to all at core um, national executive officers, fellow research consultants and enthusiasts, especially to our project coordinators and head research consultant, Dr. Richard Sanchez. As researchers, we are also learners. We empty our cups for new knowledge and trends. We are always hungry for everything. We develop teachable attitude that um, keeps us always open-minded for new approaches and developments. As Mother Teresa has said, you can do what I cannot do, and I can do what you cannot do. Together, we create great things. This is indeed a manifestation that to become an effective and efficient researcher and knowledge contributor, we also need to learn from other experts on the fields. Tonight, we'll be learning from another expert. So in behalf of EDCOR, I am pleased to welcome you all in this virtual room. Have fun learning and researching everyone. There you go. Thank you so much, Sir Cyril S. De La Fuente, university instructor from University of Atique, Sibalom, Antique. Uh, he is from College of Business and Administration. That is indeed a very warm welcome. Thank you so much. And so before we formally introduce our resources speaker for uh, tonight, we would like to again reiterate uh, and remind in reminding our audience to please turn off the microphone as soon as we start with the session for tonight. And of course, um, you may not open your camera, but we would really appreciate if you have your camera on, especially if you're not having any internet connection issues. And also, um, it will be also appreciated if you could um, type in your institution and your last name and first name as your um, identifier po dito sa ating Zoom. So that when you actually ask question, we will be able to address you appropriately. And so to introduce our speaker uh, for tonight, I do have the honor to share with you some background about our resource speaker. Our resource speaker finished his Bachelor of Secondary Education major in Social Science at Cebu Normal University in 2021. Or 2001 rather. He earned his Master of Arts in Education with a major of specialization in social studies in 2012, as well as his Doctor of Philosophy in Education major in Research and Evaluation in 2019 in the same university. In his years of teaching, he served as a Supreme Student Government Advisor in private schools, became a Master Teacher and School Research Coordinator in Don Serio Osmeña Senior Memorial National high school since the opening of senior high school level. He is also a part-time instructor at Cebu Normal University College of Teacher Education, wherein he had been a demonstrator teacher in Araling Pandipunan in the division and regional level. He had also written action research and school level uh, at school level and also a resource speaker during learning uh, during the learning action cell and in serving in service trainings and an external research panelists at the University of San Carlos South Campus Senior High School Department. So friends, let us please welcome our fellow research consultant, Dr. Reynaldo Moral. Good evening po, sir. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Adrian Tamayo. Uh, can I be heard, sir? Yes, sir. Loud and clear po sa akin. Okay. Uh, pagiging researcher po ay medyo challenging kapag tinawag kang expert pero para sa akin simple lang po ako ah, lalong lalo na sa Cebu City pasensya na po kay Dr. Richard ah, minsan po nagkakabisaya po ako Sir Richard hello hello <laughs> lagi ako na na nosebleed sa iyo kuya <laughs> okay lang po yun sir pasanaya ah, lang po ang pagsasalita ng bisaya Okay. I would like to take the opportunity to thank my co-chairperson in case I'll an experience and technological glitch. Uh, so thank you very much, Sir Atamayo, Sir De La Fuente, uh, Dr. Samboy Franco, and of course, our very supportive uh, head research consultant, Dr. Richard Sanchez. Okay. Let me share. Uh, allow me to share now my screen.
Can you see my screen, sir? Yes po, sir. Opo, nakikita po. Yeah. Ah, klaro po, sir? Yes po. Okay. So again, good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to be the first. Uh, this is my first experience in uh, EdCore embracing the culture of research. And as you see on my first slide, I am very proud that I am from the division of Cebu City. Kumusta sa mga nakasabot o bisaya? I'm happy that you are here. Pasensya na po, Dr. Tamayo. Nakabisaya ko kanina. Pero I translated it into Tagalog. Anyway, the Philippines is an ethno-linguistic country and that we also know how to speak being a polyglot like Jose Rizal. Okay, so as you can see in my screen, I, I included my uh, uh, the time when I employed in the Department of Education. Actually, this is my 13th year in DepEd. I started teaching in 2001. So now it's 2021. So this is my two decades of teaching. And so far, araling panlipunan po talaga yung aking major. I've just finished my PhD in 2019. So para sa akin, I'm still a beginner as a researcher, although I have made some uh, researches po, but not in Scopus, okay? because it's not that uh, mandatory in the Department of Education. However, as a research um, coordinator in our school, uh, I need to work on it and support my colleagues kahit na kaunti lamang ang sumusubok ng uh, research. I also included Cebu Normal University because I'm a part-time instructor there in University of San Carlos because I am one of the external panelists, the full-fledged uh, PhD during their, the, for the senior high school level. And of course, as of now, I am also a part-time instructor in Cebu Technological University. Okay, so learning from others as the beginning of relevant investigation entails for me a, a very big opportunity. It's because uh, learning is a continuous process. Life never stops teaching. That's why we continue learning. So I am humbly asking the, the support of my fellow research consultants because I finished the PhD for uh, almost two years 2019. So I'll, what I'll be sharing to you is uh, I'm handling now my dissertation, okay, in Cebu Normal University because it's a, a research training institution, a teacher training institution, and we are proud that uh, we top one and of the PRC for LED, okay. So what I'll be sharing to you is uh, the type of or the format and the standard of uh, research in Cebu Normal University because uh, it is quite different from, uh, I think, EDD because they will only uh, generate a theory. But for PhD, major in research and evaluation, we generate a theory and then we validate the hypothesis based on the propositions and the, uh, the theory generated. Uh, since uh, philosophy lies here, it is only a direct apprehension or knowledge that we would uh, really uh, understand and then apply it in our own context. Okay, so at the end of this session, the participants are expected to gain uh, relevant information on topics related to qualitative meta synthesis. So uh, for some, this might be new and for others, they have uh, read about this. But in my experience, of course, uh, Nagkandara pa po ako, hindi po ma madali ang paggawa ng metasynthesis because when I defended my title pa lamang, na-reject po because I love quantitative. But since uh, most of my professors uh, advise me to uh, look for or, or delve for qualitative, so that's when napunta po ako sa metasynthesis, kung ano nga ba itong metasynthesis. Okay, uh, you are... Uh, expected to become familiar with the recent research results on metasynthesis because there are many types of metasynthesis. You will be making uh, meaningful connections with other educators and researchers in terms of theory generation. And of course, uh, we'll give up time to reflect on the components of validating the hypothesis on the theory and guided by the proposition. So as a teacher, I am teaching for practical research one and two and three eyes inquiries investigations and immersion and so on with the grade 12 during their second semester or final 
they will be taking uh, for the STEM they will be taking a capstone. So marami po mga research uh, subjects sa senior high school kahit na gusto ko po talagang magturo ng economics because I love it and world history. But since nandito na po ako, the only problem that I am facing now currently in my school because we are we belong to a big school. We are 106 uh, faculty members in our school, but none of them, not to brag, but none of them have published or only few had finished their master's degree. But in the senior high school, we're all uh, quite many. All right, but what is really qualitative meta synthesis? Kapag sinabing meta po, ibig sabihin marami and how we understand knowledge. So we we just simply synthesize on uh, the 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 research questions and the inclusion criteria in this design. We select the type of studies, uh, assess the quality of the studies that we are uh, exploring. We extra present analyze the data and express the synthesis. So what has been synthesized or finished by, uh, uh, let's say, researchers or professionals from higher uh, institution, this will be reconceptualized by the next researchers. So para pa po itong uh, ROI return of investment or savings and investment. So, walang mangyayari sa ating buhay kapag wala tayo mariresearch. Continue po. Hanggang sa ngayon, siguro meron ng uh, naghahanda kung paano i-research ang vaccine para sa uh, variant ng COVID-19, yung Omicron. Okay, so ito po ay isa sa mga challenges natin, mga teachers, especially I am in the basic education. So, it is always uh, for me, I'm still a plain teacher and a beginning teacher and I am uh, learning from my colleagues. So it is an internet, uh, intentional and coherent approach to analyzing data across qualitative studies. Marami pong qualitative studies or qualitative design katulad ng case study, phenomenology, grounded theory, uh, ethnography. But most of my research that I've scouted is uh, a case study. So it depends po because time really matters when we do our research, especially in the field of dissertation. So it, uh, ano po, para po bang ibabala ka sa kanyon kapag handa ka ng pagsapalaran sa uh, digmaan kapag nasa PhD na po. Okay, so what is qualitative metasynthesis further? It is a process that enables researchers to identify specific research question and then search for, we select, we appraise, we summarize and combine qualitative evidence to address the research question. On my experience, po, I, uh, since I love quantitative, but during the reading of the published journal on whatever uh, databases or index form, I separated quantitative one and a qualitative one, but the mixed method is being included. So it has to be read and read again. Actually, there are many more than hundreds of uh, printed online journals for online journals because on in other references, it could be a doctoral dissertation, but according to the panel, there are six panels po during our uh, oral defense. Three times po, tatlong beses po, nagdi-defend ang doctor, doctor of uh, education in Cebu Normal University. Okay. And uh, it needs more, more brain cells po, kahit na uh, para sa akin, uh, ordinaryo lang po talaga ako. Okay. And... Uh, the approaches to synthesize qualitative studies because this is uh, subjective by nature. Our, the, the opinions, the points of view, the desires, the values, and everything to our respondents. Okay? And we researchers, we are part of the, the data gathering. So I have listed here uh, 11 based on my scouted uh, approaches to synthesize qualitative study. We have meta-ethnography. Kapag meta-ethnography, kung ano po talaga yung culture na dapat nating malaman. Thematic synthesis, katulad, katulad din ito ng thematic analysis, you can use Kolaichi. Uh, narrative synthesis, narrations lamang kapag uh, uh, when we gather data, then we have meta-summary. Uh, 
critical interpretive synthesis up to meta study which comprising meta method metadata and meta theory so all of these i colored number six grounded theory because uh, uh, it is applied really to qualitative research and the methodology involves the construction of hypotheses and theories to collecting and analyzing of data so the theory exists based on the data iba po ang theory na uh, ina-anchor natin sa ating thesis sa master of arts in education at sa pagtuturo natin sa basic education for those um, schools having science class they uh, have a program of research so basically iba po kasi yung ip or investigatory investigatory project at ang uh, research po okay so mine is grounded theory and framework synthesis as part of uh meta synthesis so ang akin pong naranasan my experience is para po akong uh, ano ba yun mas masalimuot na pamumuhay kapag mayroon ng maraming uh, theory or iba't ibang uh, approaches or pagdulog sa uh, pag-study ng qualitative studies. But still, I never stop. I continued. Patuloy po ang laban. All right. And the title of my dissertation is Morals Theory on Creative Pedagogy in Research. Just like other researchers, uh, this title underwent uh, several changes or evolution okay that uh, we, because we are teachers we are in line with how the art and science of teaching research especially in the basic education senior high school were in the teachers especially for qualitative are afraid to teach quantitative the same also with quantitative they are afraid to take to teach qualitative or practical research one so that is one of the things that uh, we have to uh, reflect kung paano po ma-appease ma mapakalma ang mga teachers based on my experience at uh, Don Sergio Osmeña Senior Nas Memorial National High School na kapag research I, they would say if I would say ta, uh, we'll start now planata para mag uh, uh, magsimula ng action research and they will just say uh, no sir moral doc moral i uh, don't say bad words they will sim simply say that pero para sa akin even if i was not yet the coordinator because this is just this this year uh, i was only appointed as the research coordinator because of my publication because i love reading and that is one of the activities that we will employ to our students when we have our classes asynchronous or asynchronous now there are five chapters po in my dissertation that's why i asked dr sanchez kung pwede lang po chapter one lang then i will just say the important things but i will say the as best as i can po because this is my first time in edcore chapter one the title of the study is the systematic review of research driven pedagogy a theory generation so ganun po talaga sa cnu we generate a theory and then we validate the theory for uh, PhD, RE, or research and evaluation. But for some, it depends on the panel of the dissertation. And uh, of course, there's always an abstract after the finishing of the each chapter. So you have there the IMRAD, or introduction, the methods, results, and discussion. So ito po ang basic sa pagtuturo even if the the students in senior high school um, and even my son a grade 8 son in science high school they started already their ip but uh, with abstract okay so uh wag pong kalimutan ang keywords in standard po it is alphabetical order so the keywords here is that creativity paano po magiging uh, pagiging malikhain sa pagtuturo ng research okay uh, qualitative research, uh, pedagogy in research, and systematic re review. So, uh, ang pagtuturo po ay you are guiding the students. It's not only uh, what to teach, but how to teach even in, in college. Po. There is always a need to guide the students. I am, I'm handling fourth year 
uh, field study one and Araling Pan, uh, social studies majors in Cebu Normal University. So I always encourage them to uh, put yourself as a second <clears throat> parent for uh, to the children. So my chapter one uh, started with an introduction. So as a researcher, uh, the way I teach my students for uh, framing up their introduction is to spot the first sentence that it should be catchy. So the first sentence here for my dissertation in chapter one is that man's, man's progress over the years to a large extent has depended on research. And through research, the quality of man's life has improved from traditional to modern. So we, we look back forward, but higher space if we uh, step forward. Because if you don't step forward, of course, you will always remain there. That is my motto. Po, because I have just finished my uh, funded basic research, my first uh, basic research po iba yung iba po kasi yung action research na pang classroom lang po pero kapag uh, basic research that involves theory so i replicate my study my chapter one into basic research that conforms to uh, grade 11 lang po who are who were taking up practical research one qualitative okay and to continue according to the yagbil the yagbil was our previous uh, university and cnu the spirit of enthusiasm is the pursuit of innovation and development and can only be made effective through research or evidence-based decisions. So this will support uh, the readings that research is really an important thing for men and even now in different designs. Remember, we cannot produce professionals if we teach, especially in research, how to uh, guide our students in different fields of discipline. So the local setting in the Department of Education is that we they hire teachers and they uh, assign to teach that subject even if it is not their major. So they will become international teachers. How much more in senior high school for those who lack knowledge in research because their background in the undergrad is not that enough nagka pandemic pa jud pa naman okay that's so the k to 12 curriculum as a spiral in nature experienced the birth of banks by the way i finished my uh, dissertation in april 2019 and so april, after april 2019 i applied as a part time instructor in cnu and luckily i was uh, absorbed pero nabutan po ng pandemic kaya virtual consultation po kami or virtual class. So the situation here is that uh, there were only few or non-literature wherein I have been scouted about best uh, practices related to teaching research in the senior high school. If there is, it's quantitative. So my mission here is to how to be inculcated with the theory and that theory must be supported be activated always. Ano po ang gamit ng teorya kapag hindi natin ina-apply in our own context. So the set, the local setting here is that uh, practical research teachers are majoring the minor and minoring the major if it is not their field of specialization. Napipilitan po ang mga teacher na magturo kahit hindi nila gusto. Anyway, this can be uh, learned. Okay? The, the love of learning Okay, continues if you will be teaching there for quite some time or experience is always a best teacher. And so the gap here is that uh, it, uh, I need to conduct you know, the inv uh, an investigation of some best practices in teaching research that is influential in the process, especially in the basic education, including the attitudes and the attributes of the research teachers because it really influenced the way we handle our students okay so we always remember the nature of the child and the nurture of the child okay so as teachers we have a big role here in making a difference in uh, perpetuating the mission vision of the department of education and of course in higher education so academic is po tayo kapag meron pong students na uh, ma-delay na kanilang pag-submit ng outputs or flexible learning because module 
by itself is a flexible curriculum. So uh, the main purpose of my study in chapter one is to generate and validate a theory using inductive approach from specific to general. That would explain the phenomenon of teaching research in senior high school. So uh, there are many, uh, uh, not many, few uh, researches how to configure the uh, the culture of research in higher education in CNU, but in the Department of Education, only few and sasabak, especially the principals, the school heads, the master teachers, okay, because they are the instructional leaders. So it would only happen if uh, I would look into the uh, specific objectives of my study, like an in-depth review of 17 published studies. 17 po, but in reality, before the 17, dahil ito po ay na-screened na more than 17. It's more than 100 in real life. So I'll be uh, scouted uh, the published online journals. Naninibago po ako sa iba't ibang databases kung ano bang gamit ng ERIC, ng Scopus, ng Wiley, ng uh, Web Science. Okay. <clears throat> but I never give up. I always look for <clears throat> the things that uh, fits my mind. So the, the aims, uh, the methodology used, the participants, the instruments, and the outcomes of the study. It is based on the abstract po and the title of the study. I also write there the country of origin and, of course, the authors. So these are the specific objectives for chapter one. And uh, after that, I will be uh, summarizing the best practices related to the teaching of research. Now, since uh, this is qualitative in nature, there's always a chance for uh, philosophical stance, okay? Uh, may gamit po ba ang philosophy sa qualitative? Of course, uh, this is um, representing the, the epistemological points of view or how on how we uh, understand directly the way uh, the statements that is the epistemology and the assumptions there about the development of knowledge. So we always use an assumption. It's because this is uh, qualitative in uh, nature. The way we hypothesize for quantitative, we hypothesize that uh, in null form, that there is no significant influence, uh, significant difference, significant impact, significant relationship. But for qualitative assumptions po ang ginagamit to develop a new knowledge. So the epistemology assumption is here where the valid and legitimate knowledge plus the ontological assumption where the nature of reality and the axiological, the values of ethics and decision making. Ito po ang mga concept or concepts na dapat na alamin ng teacher when we are already in the field because we are keep on asking questions, philosophically speaking, keeps on asking question, why does a learner uh, behaves or learns this way? Why does a student uh, performs this way. Kahit na marami na po tayong gender and development programs in service training, we're always asking ourselves on why do uh, students perform uh, poorly. So we assume that this is, is so the research deter determines what type of research that's suitable for our students. That's why as a teacher, you need to determine your classroom problems. Kaya mag uh, hinay hinay ka ng mag uh, ano yan, prepare yourself in the making of a problems that needs to be solved needs to be shared to others to be monitored and reported so that's the thing that I miss to submit in my uh, uh, submission for uh, best in, best in uh, research researcher in the field of uh, educator in the field of research because of my memorandum of agreement that was not given timely yeah, march uh, march by indeed sinabi kaagad sa amin okay so to continue the 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 philosophy plays an important role in qualitative research it's because uh, the the formulation of ideas and problems and the selection of relevant data okay are 
are what are what we call the essences of the new directions that we suggest by the new hypothesis that we are going to pose and the questions on, encounter, on encounters while doing research. As we're doing research, po, we always doubt of tama ba ating ginagawa or hindi. But always remember, uh, this is for me, huh? for me, this is only a uh, requirement for the degree, something like that. Because if you don't use or manage your time or your other resources, it will delay graduation. And that's the thing that uh, we are after for. The feeling is very astounding, but the experience was very, ano po, napakahirap po na pagiging PhD at ikaw yung isa sa mga trusted, na isa sa mga haligi na inyong skwelahan. Kaya nga po, I asked, uh, actually I just finished earlier how to bundle my modules, okay? Because we only report two times or three times a week. So I, earlier I went to a school, uh, I tied my modules for, nag sort ng modules, and I said to my colleagues that I have a live show. Ano ba yung live show? Live show po sa research na ikaw na talaga, Doc Moral. Pero para sa akin, <laughs> I need the support of my of my colleagues. It's because this is not only for my professional development, but also for others. However, what I made, I always post it to my FB to my friends in FBH because I am proud of what I have done. Uh, it is uh, part of really my career that uh, one of the things that you can never be an EDD or PhD or DevEd if you don't have the, the art of reading or the habit of reading. Okay, so what are the steps in systematic review? Here we have to frame questions for review. Marami pong uh, questions na kailangan nating uh, papasok sa iyong utak. Ano ba yung mga questions na kailangan nung itanong? Framing uh, uh, questions for a review. We also identify relevant work. What are the works that are closely related to your to your study? So those those questions that you are framing are are have been said. Okay, modified to the protocol or defining uh, who are the respondents of the study, what are the interventions made by uh, the researcher and the outcomes or the designs which are uh, needs to be apparent. Dapat alam mo kung ano yung kinagamit. As of now, I am, I am busy of how to make, uh, I'm studying what is the, or the things that involves uh, structure structural equation model something like that structural equation model i am because in basic education and even if you ask i ask my colleagues in in don serio na kaunti lamang ang makikinig sa iyo they will just of course they are proud of you but i think they are not interested in what are you speaking about <clears throat> okay so after framing questions you identify a relevant work. These are multiple resources, both computerized and printed. But uh, the selection criteria should flow directly from the review questions, okay? Uh, including the inclusions and exclusions of the study because you'll be keeps on reading and reading. So while I am uh, in the making of study, even in master of arts or master's degree, we for teachers, we need to have uh, study leave. Huh? But, as, but I, I've never experienced that one. Study leave, Ben. Marami kang service credit sa Department of Education. Huh? Making your work relevant. Paano magiging relevant kung uh, pagod ka na? Number three is assessing the quality of study. So there are many steps there. We follow the, simply follow the criteria. And this criteria should be acceptable to the level, to the design, according to the comments and suggestions of the panel uh, of the, dis uh, the dissertation. And in addition, uh, the strength of inferences in making recommendations for future research, they're always there from the starting point to the turning point. There are always conclusions and recommendations 
you need to read all of those things beside. But the qualitative or mixed research because the quantitative is intended for meta analysis and ito po ay meta synthesis. So we will follow, follow the CASPI. Then we summarize the evidence. Uh, the evidence here is that uh, as we explore the differences between studies and combining their, their effects, it could be like that uh, I've encountered meta analysis and I also did some uh, things. Okay, sorry, po. some things. Okay, and uh, okay, some things and uh, experience. Uh, naghalo halo na po yung aking idea dahil isa sa mga panel nagsuggest na gumawa ng meta-analysis. Nag-meta-analysis din po ako but during the second oral defense tinanggal po ang meta-analysis. Hindi ko alam kung bakit. Basta isa lang po siguro yung dapat uh, i-master ng isang PhD. No? That, and then that's meta-synthesis. Okay. And interpreting the findings. So uh, when we interpret the findings, we highlight, we need Stabilo to highlight everything, okay, because we are exploring things that are unexplored. And uh, although it is in high quality, marami pong mga inferences, marami pong papasok sa utak kapag ikaw ay nagre-research na. So don't worry. Uh, all you have to do is to take time to rest or relax, okay? And for the selection of studies, we uh, starting for how to use a strategy, the search strategy po. So it is a systematic, dapat uh, nakasunod po tayo sa isang tool na CASPI or Critical Assessment Skills program or sa iba for the health and health and allied sciences it, they call it clinical assessment skills appraisal skills program so here uh, we use the, the database kung anong database ang ginagamit the comments of the uh, depending sa keywords because it really also matters uh, so as researchers we should also be transparent uh, and uh, always think that you are not only making a research <clears throat> para ikaw ay graduate ha, at magkaroon ng diploma. Until now, I haven't received my diploma sa PhD. But I continue published uh, the content of my uh, dissertation. Next is you identify the type of studies that you are looking into. Uh, alamin mo kung ano yung mga respondents, the intervention, okay, uh, the control and the outcome of the study. So, of course, uh, kung kapag qualitative po, marami itong mga substantiated quotations, okay, uh, dapat mo itong hulihin because this will be part of the study as you go further. Then the inclusion criteria, uh, you'll start there start there that ito talaga ay qualitative, okay? Na-publish po in a reference or peer-reviewed journals. Marami pong nagsasabi na predator po ito. For me, bahala na predator. Okay lang sa akin ang predator. Importante, I learned a lot from my readings, okay? Uh, sorry po sa mga chat, pero sa DepEd po, it doesn't matter that really, okay? Uh, naka-focus po ang study sa secondary or college. That's part of the inclusion. Uh, the participants are teachers and students and naka-publish po ito 2006 onward. So meron pong limitation. Bawal ang ancient references. To select the papers, uh, the database will be screened. But since uh, you need time to look for like kung ito ba Scopus or Eric or uh, ano yan, web science. It doesn't matter. But for me, as long as it is related, especially in ResearchGate or Google Scholar, diretsyo na po. Anyway, everything is subject for correction. Basta patuloy lang po 
ang daloy ng buhay. All right. And after selecting the papers, there is what we call data extraction. For data extraction, uh, I included there the country of origin, the design, how to collect the data, what are their tools that they use, and of course, the best uh, teaching practices in teaching research, secondary man or college. For quality appraisal, I use uh, CASPI. That was the suggestion of my advisor, Dr. Susi Mapanyaris. And it is a fix, uh, appended in our appendices and the sources of data. So the sources of data should be, again, qualitative. Dapat qualitative. Published about uh, 2006 up to 2017 because there were few, uh, only few 2018. And meron po itong pedagogical style ng pagtuturo ng research. So these are the, the types of the things that we have to prepare when we use uh, metasynthesis po. Okay. And part of the dissertation is that we it is important for the research teachers because uh, time goes on. Um, DepEd will mandate the teachers to have really an action research. Mandatory na po. Okay, kung gusto niyo matoto. Uh, senior high school students, of course, they will benefit on it. And in fact, I already applied, uh, replicated, repeat, and duplicate my study, but for grade 11 only. I applied it already. So senior high school students, and I underwent learning action cell, uh, focus group discussions sa mga teachers, and then give learning kit to my students. And of course, finally, na, na implement po by grade level only sa grade 11 lang. Uh, my suggestion lang po dapat may suporta ng school head para po ba gaganahan ang research teacher na magpatuloy ng kanyang masalimuot na pamumuhay sa research. Of course, sa librarians, uh, we, were, we will store the outputs of this uh, research, I mean, students' outputs, how much more kailangan po uh, ng suporta ng mga teachers, yung mga thesis po at dissertations, we need a uh, duplicate to be stored in the library so that we could be proud also that the basic education is very strong in research. School heads, because they are the instructional leaders, kakaunti lang po sa mga school heads ang sasabak ng research because of the many things that they are uh, into busy like SBM, marami po. Okay, uh, other schools, because my respondents here in my dissertation are uh, public and private schools. Okay, I, my respondents are UP, a University of San Carlos also, and the future researchers. So somebody must continue the research okay, so that uh, they will feel also the, the different contexts. Okay, so they need to repeat and duplicate my study because it differs in methodology. It differs in sampling, in the learning uh, environment, I mean, the research local, okay? uh, the, statistic, the statistical treatment, and other things besides. The Department of Education also, they keep on asking that they are part of the authorship, but uh, during the publication, it's on only my name. So they keep, until now, they keep on asking, they, they should be given a certificate as part of, uh, the author, but uh, but that depends on my mind. I still I'm still asking. Only uh, my certificate is there, and submitted it to Edcor. Okay, so the Department of Education. So these are uh, the things that plays an important role that would benefit with my study. So if you look at one of the pages, oh, I scanned my my dissertation, page nineteen. Uh, it shows there on how I started with the uh, readings. So I have there 66 identified studies, but actually it's not 66, po. more than 66, it's more than 100. I just write there 66, okay? So that to, to be exact, po, that ito ay qualitative. Uh, that, uh, it undergoes screening. So from the screening of the journal, the title and the abstract, 
uh, screen po uh, minus 19 because of inadequate the topic is not that adequate so nagiging 47 na lang po then continue screening uh, the full text assessed for eligibility 47 minus 17 it became 30 so 30 na lang ang naiwan because uh, it did not answer the research goal then from 30 continue reading the content minus 13 so excluded po ang 13 it's because insufficient na naman ang methodological quality hanggang sa ito ay naging uh, 17 so so sa 17 included in the meta synthesis so this is the flow of the selection of the studies one of the frameworks okay so the CASP that I am talking about is uh, one of the tools in the, uh, explaining how to collect data in metasynthesis, okay, CASP. So all you have to do is to, uh, of course, you have to read first and then you check if uh, it is clear, okay, was there a clear statement of the aims of the research? Just check for yes, or you can tell or no next is it is a qualitative methodology approach so you have to check yes can tell or no okay then uh was the research designed appropriate to address the aims of the research you check po caspi po ito then to continue was the recruitment strategy appropriate to the aims of the research was the data collected in a way address the research issue? Okay. Then the right side po, mayroon pong hint dito, you also have to read. Okay. Settings of the data collection was justified. Then uh, mayroon bang relationship? There are 10 questions. And after reading, you have to, time from time to time, you have to visit your advisor. Swerte po ako dahil yung advisor namin is just across the street. So, tatawid lang po ako. Okay? Ilang metro lang nandyan na po ang aking uh, advisor. So, aalagaan ka na yung advisor kapag ikaw ay masigasig. Uh, you are obedient enough. Okay? And hardworking. Of course, you have to help yourself. Okay? So, hanggang sa... Uh, continue reading or continue reading was the recruitment strategy appropriate okay and the sources of data so in in my readings uh, the sources of data are there <clears throat> there are 17 so i started from the public the year of publication 2006 up to 2017 so the first column shows there the author or the authors the, the year of publication the database, I just simply uh, wrote the, right there, T-E-S-L-E-J, because some of the things that no matter how I keep on uh, researching or delving, T-E-S-L-E-J lang talaga ang mahanap ko. Hindi naman ako kini-question. Merong Eric, uh, research gate po kapag hin, hindi na masyadong mahanap kung uh, saan talaga nakabase ang, ang uh, research. Uh, ito by ProQuest. Pero wala po akong nakita sa sa Scopus, I do not know. Basta ito lang po, it depends on my time because I did not file a study leave. I continue working uh, and at the same time writing my dissertation. The next column po is the title. Title should bear the word research. Like number one, researching the research culture in English language in education in Vietnam. So although it is uh, English language, but there is an integration of research and the methods used is survey and documentary analysis okay so if you look at there uh, survey is prone for quantitative but documentary analysis is qualitative therefore this is a mixed type of research from where it's in vietnam so i've been to vietnam sometimes when i read this kapunta po ako ng vietnam sa pagbasa radi ay okay and uh like number two in 2014 here arnel and alas alshley uh this is from ecrtd teaching research writing to female undergraduate in saudi arabia okay this is case study 
Okay, so if you look at po, marami po mga case study. Pero meron po, uh, there is Scopus, uh, sorry, na Scopus, meron ding Eric. Okay, so dahil sa tagal na. na? Okay, but so far, based on my observation, marami pong research na metasynthesis, pero nasa linya po ng health and allied sciences. Okay, so to continue, I tabulated one. And this is, there are 17 tables. Okay, I marked their study one, study two, up to study 17. So the title, then the name of the journal, including the, the volume of the journal, the page, and then the URL or the link, then the author, and it should be the, followed by the year of publication and in Vietnam, then the aims also. For example, here the aim is to investigate the rule of research and how it is perceived and conducted by English language teacher in Vietnam. And the methodology here is qualitative documentary analysis. There are only seven respondents, okay, and they are teachers. So I have there the outcomes reported. For so example, example there is teachers as aspired to do research to improve their teaching practices but do not forget to uh, screenshot or underline the quotations the utterances yung mga sinasabi kapag like interview na okay wag mong kalimutan all right and for summary of study 17 it is in singapore from australian journal of teacher okay and to investigate the rate of the uh, research uh, this is qualitative this is case study so I scan this. This is the original copy of my dissertation. Okay. Uh, let me continue. Nanahang na. Okay. Pasensya na po. Nahang po ang aking uh, laptop. Hello, Doc Richard? Yes po, uh, Dr. Uh, Rinald. No. Uh, medyo nahang po ang aking laptop. Ano Pero as a video po po tayo. Would you like me to share the screen instead po? Ah, uh, is it okay po? Sir Tamayo. I'll stop, I'll stop share po. Kita na po ba? Uh, I'll stop share po ha. Nakikita niyo po ba sa screen niyo yung share ko po? Ah, uh, makikita na po. Okay, thank you sir. Thank you sir Adrian. Okay, so uh, that's the uh, one of the uh, problems here in in um, during pandemic, no, we experienced global uh, technical glitches here. So to continue, there are here the sources of data, okay, and uh, seventeen studies po. So to continue, okay. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Um, uh, so these are these were that uh, uh, page or the slide that I've shown to you earlier, no? So, so Vietnam and the Singapore, okay. And uh, yes, sir. Next, next slide, please. Okay. So to summarize the research practices in I because this is already uh, published in Asian Intellect. Nagbago uh, po ang table. So, meron po title of the study and the best practices. So, ito na po yung summary of the 17 studies, the best practices. So, nagbabago po ang itsura. Dahil iba po ang format ng journal kaysa uh, research. Okay. So, they have their own standard or pamantayan po. Okay. So, it's not that we are done with our dissertation. We need to publish this one. One of the highest achievement of being a teacher is to publish his or her work. And the highest, ang pinaka highest para sa akin is if somebody have cited your study. Ito po yung, that's part of the impact factor ng, ng research. Okay, the number of citations. So far, to tell you honestly, I have only one citation, but it doesn't matter. Wala naman pong nagtatanong sa aking ka, kabaro sa Don Serio Osmeña. Okay? But for me, I would love if my citation pa po. That for me, it's a very, very big achievement. To, uh, next slide, please. 
Okay, so uh, going back to our previous knowledge in in making up the themes. Okay, so we started with the on how will we really analyze the data in qualitative is through coding. Meron po mga uh, electronic coding katulad ng NVivo, uh, EBSCO, marami po. But for me, uh, I can only afford manual coding. So the coding started here, then you sort, then you synthesize, and then you are theorizing. But if you look at the picture, there are still many questions. So you are, you are starting from particular to the most general or abstract, but still you are asking yourself if you are on the right path or the right track. So, so the codes becomes uh, uh, categories and the categories becomes the themes and the themes becomes the theory. You have to defend this one, explain, okay, especially the construct of the theory. Next slide, please. Okay, so it started with codes. So you have to think about reducing data without losing its meaning. So dapat hindi ka maliligaw ng landas. Pero kapag ikaw ay naligaw, you still have to explain why. The same in quantitative. No, we 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 will uh, interpret the 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 results and back up it with qualitative. Pwede ra. So the qualitative findings here represent the data and address the research questions. From the codes, we categorize so that we can formulate a theme. All right. Next slide, please. So we undergo pre-coding things to consider. Uh, it might influence you as a researcher that it needs to have your own uh, background. You yourself. Dapat alam mo kung ano ang yung ginagawa. Mag-a-analyze ka po. Then the beliefs and the biases because that might be one of the things na hindi ka bias sa uh, pag-integrate uh, na inyong mga data. Dapat interesado ka rin. Dahil kapag hindi ka interesado, research po ito, eh, wala nang mangyari. It might stop you. Or in philosophy, if you stop asking question, philosophy dies. Mamamatay po ang education. Mamamatay ang philosophical paradigm kapag wala ng questions na nananatiling uh, dapat mong itanong sa iyong sarili and you address that one to the panel dissertation. Next, please. So the researcher's influence, next slide, please. Mm. As a researcher, you have also to consider the, the, the things, memoing po, because I experienced uh, manual, manual uh, coding during data analysis in qualitative research. How will you document your personal reflections and impressions? Okay, so uh, for me, my, on my own experience I'm sharing now is that I have read two to three uh, research journals. Uh, I underline it and then I have to write everything and i have my lesson plan i have my lab book here na adjud ko lab book and my lab book na uh, hanggang 3 to 5 lab books already i always bring with me my lab book whenever i i, I go nasa aking bag because during the collection phase you have to uh, be observant okay then alamin mo kung ang participants ay akma sa iyong ginagawang trabaho because this is uh, for yourself in the first place. This is for yourself. And then for the students, your experience during data collection process might also be one of the rigors of research. Mahira po ang pag ng data. It's very hard to please everyone to interview. Marami po ang nahihiya, may natatakot, mayroong hindi ka papansinin. It's part of the academic journey po. Then uh, during data analysis phase, you will document your thoughts. So your thoughts there, that's why I experienced content analysis because I counted the frequency of the words that are keeps on repeating. Hala, umabot ng 90 plus. I make a tally sheet or frequency, not knowing that yun pala ay bahagi na ng content analysis. Well, I learned from it. Okay, and the codes and respective meanings. Bawat code po ay may kahulugan. Bawat salita ay may kahulugan. So these are the things that we have to, to empower and uh, let the panel 
believe in you because you are a doctoral. Okay, PhD pa jud. Okay, next please, next slide. Okay, so this is an example of manual coding. So to prevent confusion, you, you may make a color code. So the codes there, yung pink codes are learning, involvement, research, uh, challenges, qualitative, quantitative, mixed research. Okay, so paste it there. Ikaw lang ang nakakaalam nito. Then you show that to the panelists during oral defense so that they will believe in you. Huh? Remember that 90% of uh, being a full-fledged doctor is uh, perseverance. 10% is intelligence. Ganun lang po. Okay. And then you categorize. The first category is that differentiated learning activities okay? that you, I have experienced, I have uh, read. There is motivation in learning. Okay. This is the most important part in, in your work from home learning plan in your lesson plan. There is systematic evaluative process. So assessment po ito. Then from the categories, you are now making a thematic. So the themes there, in uh, lalabas na yung mga theme hanggang sa proposition. So these propositions are what are the counterpart of the hypothesis in quantitative research. It could be like this and you have to explain this one. Okay, for example, of the proposition is teaching uh, research are reflected to students' research productivity, productivity, teaching research. And based from the propositions, lalabas po ang theory. Okay, the teacher's attributes okay, and attitudes and the creative teaching practices lead to students' uh, positive uh, attitudes also and productivity although this is already known for us for for us teachers for us educators but uh in as to what extent ganun po, as to what extent okay so after making the manual coding ay salamat thank you lord sakto baka ni or uh, sakto tama ba ito ganun po okay so I keep on praying also to the Lord, the great master, Lord Jesus Christ. Kung tama ba? And of course, he guided me and produced it. Okay. So these are the analytical analytical themes of the study. Okay. So first theme is involve me and I learn by doing. Theme two is that I may not like research, but I can learn. Theme three, I come, I like, and I inspire. So these are the things that... Uh, needs to be given to the students and my study from chapters one to chapter uh previous slide po. okay so themes sorry po. okay the analytical themes so these are the themes from the themes okay from the themes there so if you observe the themes looks like a metaphor, no? metaphorical po. And these are the things that also na pagdidibatihan na naman, na involve me and I learn by doing. So, katulad, uh, this is known for a Chinese adage, no? Uh, teach me, uh, to show me and I forget, uh, tell me and I forget, show me and I remember, involve me and I learn. Okay, but you have to reconstruct that one based on the systematic review. Uh, do you like really research? Okay. But I can learn. Okay? So you have no way out. Kailangan mo matuto sa gusto mo at sa hindi. Kailangan mo magsaliksik. And be a model also to your students. Because for me, the best research teacher is the one who have made publications. And the three, I come, I like, and I inspire. Because I am an Araling Panlipunan teacher, I remember Julius Caesar. Okay? I came, I saw, I conquer. Ganon po kadakila si Julius Caesar. But for me, as a research teacher, I come to senior high school and became a master teacher. I like to teach research, quantity or quality or mix, and I inspire my students through CI or uh, or DI, uh, differentiated instructions. Next slide, please. Okay. After the themes, you have now the propositions. So these are the tentative statements that needs to be attested with 
uh, appearances of the respondents, okay? That teaching practices are related to students' research productivity. How true? Proposition number two is students' research productivity is influenced by their uh, attitudes towards research and by their teachers. So uh, teachers could, uh, students could really learn if they have the best research teacher well experienced because of uh, uh, the publication he made. Of course, you have to show to the students that you have published. I Google mo yung name ko sa new tab or browser. Uh, you can see my name, the PDF. So you can see there. So there is a, what we call productivity of a research teacher. So it might influence also to your students. The third proposition states that Teaching research requires creativity and aspiration of the teacher. So, ikaw ay magiging malikhain kapag aspired ka. How true? You will be making a difference po. Creative ka palagi. Of course, you use different strategies, methods, because teaching techniques comes naturally. Depende po sa learning environment and the level of uh, students and uh, subject matter. Those are the factors that might influence your uh, capacity or your teaching style. Next slide, please. Okay, so from the propositions, A, do not forget to substantiate because you will explain that one. Chua, 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 chua. Ibig sabihin, you will explain the theme one by one or the combination of theme one and theme two in, in the proposition and then you have to palaman it or substantiate that with the utterances. Yung mga quotations, okay? Mga panipi ba yan sa Tagalog? Okay? Naangkop sa, na, yung nabasa, sa, the author also. Okay? Then you have to uh, italize, uh, italicize that one. Okay? So you are emphasizing or underscoring that what you are copying, what you are paraphrasing there, conforms to the utterances or the significant statements of the uh, respondents coming from the respondents. Next, so that's proposition one, proposition three, and then you have to uh, reconceptualize that by making a paradigm. So the paradigm there is that your target, when your students becomes a, a productive in research it's because of your attributes so the attributes of the teachers professional and personal really matters okay then uh, students positive attitudes depends on the way you guide your students the way you carry your students virtually okay offline or online it's a new normal but before the covid how creative you are and the creative teaching practices that practices that you have learned from your readings and from your colleagues so these are the constructs of the uh, themes and the propositions as you go along with your study you can now create your theory next slide please okay so this is now the theory that teachers attributes and their creative teaching practices leads to students positive attitudes so i am high high highlighting there the theory okay because a theory is only a tentative statement it must be proven its effectiveness its functionality when you are already in the context and share that to your police in the service so the teachers attributes we we'll say personal so uh, that is how you grow as uh Personal, no? you, you grow personal and professionally. Your demographic profile matters kung ikaw ba ay teacher one or teacher three, female or male. If you have attended relevant uh, webinars or seminars, ganun po. And if you have made research publications or research thesis only or dissertation, if you have uh, attended research conference or summit, something like that. Those are the attributes of being a research teacher. Your creative teaching practices depends on not only from your lesson plan, but the way your, your master teacher, the principal, the coordinator observe you, how creative you are. Of course, we are all creative, but as to what extent? And of course, the students' positive attitudes. We are always looking for academics so far for the department of our 
students, okay? That we will not fail students if we, even if they got low score, okay? Meron pong deportment, the, the nature of the child because they learn differently. So teachers, we should teach also differently or in many ways. Now, this theory uh, uh, must be uh, considered and then you have to hypothesize kung ano ang mangyayari sa theory. So next slide, please. What will happen to the theory is that you have to hypothesize that students' research output is influenced by their teachers' attributes and attitudes towards research. So how, how valid is it? That's the question. The second hypothesis is students' research outputs create meanings from a passionate and committed research teacher. That's why kung ikaw ay passionate, you have to show to your students that being prompt in the submission, being true to what you are teaching is that you have not, you are not only teaching what to teach, but you are also pacing time as to stop for a while and then ask the students which part of the module, okay, or the lesson is difficult to understand. How committed you are, okay, that you are, you should not be coming late during uh, online class, making you uh, an efficient teacher and becomes an effective teacher if the students are happy, well, enjoy in your lesson. And the next hypothesis is teachers' lived experiences and qualities have some influence on students' research outputs. So is it really true? How valid na kung ang kanilang mga outputs na mayro mga outputs na kinopia sa ibang koan dahil online cheating nga here, uh, the, the influence and the qualities there really affect you as a teacher. That's why your lived experience uh, is uh, it really matters of who really you, who really you are as a research teacher. Even if I am teaching DISS or disciplines and ideas in social sciences, applied economics, but still I cannot forget uh, the steps and testing hypothesis. Uh, they'll now all of these hypotheses are needs to be validated. That's why uh, the chapter two of my of my dissertation is the first hypothesis of the dissertation. Then chapter three is the second hypothesis. Chapter four is the third hypothesis. Uh, next slide, please, sir. So to validate, so this is now the sequence. Say so continue, sir. Chapter two is the title Teacher's Attributes and their Students' Research Productivity. Next, okay, continue, sir, just continue. Okay, up to chapter four. Chapter three, Passion and Commitment in Teaching Research, a Metasynthesis. So ito ay Metasynthesis po, another design in qualitative. For chapter two, it's uh, descriptive, correlational, and inferential. So uh, quantitative po ang pag-validate ng chapter two or hypothesis one. Then for chapter four, teacher's journey of phenomenological analysis. So among the chapters, uh, the chapter one was already uh, published in Asian intellect. Chapter two already published. Chapter three, na published na rin po. Chapter four, I've just submitted it in the Perian journal, journal and waiting for its decision. Kapag na basura, don't be afraid. There's always there's always a, a lifetime, a line, a light. Okay, then I, no, if God closes its door, okay, no, the angels would open its windows. Ganun po ang aking uh, pananalig sa aking sarili. Chapter 4 na lang po ang hindi na publish. And chapter 5 is the epilogue of the study. Continue, sir. Chapter five is the epilogue of the study. So what are the things that I, I can uh, really uh, prove to myself as a PhD from the making of chapter one to chapter four? What happened to my life? What are the learnings that I have gathered in the academic journey being a PhD? Naunsa na ng PhD? Ano na nangyari sa PhD? Marami po mga uh, doctor po sa... DepEd will not just name, but what's their function? So it's not only a degree. You have to to be true to yourself and be credible, credible enough. That's what I'm showing to DepEd and to my colleagues in the service that being a doctor is uh, <clears throat> being compassion, 
be true to yourself and show who really you are. Even if I'm not perfect, but I keep on trying and trying. So as so, my plan now is to make a as <laughs> Sir Richard. <laughs> thank you, sir. Is to continue because this is a vocation. I love my family. I have my one wife and my one son, but for me, I would be very happy because they are always supporting me. In fact, my wife is just right in front of me. <laughs> okay, because teaching might be enjoying if you have your family to, to be very supportive with. Next slide, please. Okay, so the validation of hypothesis two is uh, to identify if journal patterns of passion, teaching, and commitment exist in teaching research. So, isa po ito sa mga uh, layunin. Uh, okay? So, we will know the patterns and the commitment okay? through the demographic profile of the teachers and their attitudes of teaching research. So, another thesis po ito, chapter 2. Another thesis, okay? part of dissertation. Next slide, please. Uh, so that is an example of the metasynthesis. You are right. We need to extend our hands to others, not for money, but for impact. And it, yes, I do agree. Thank you, uh, Mom, uh, can Mary Jane. Okay, so I highlighted there. Ano pong ginawa ko? I keep. Uh, this is from. Uh, ano po ito? Okay, balik na yung memory ko. Okay, so metasynthesis po, again, framework, this is framework synthesis. Okay, so I highlighted the number of uh, uh, okay, frequency of readings and the frequency of the things that keeps on repeating, repetition po. Kapag redundant, na ibig sabihin, the data has already been saturated and it's time for you to stop, reflect, and then you interpret. Back up that with readings and the chua-chua-chua. Kapag say chua-chua-chua, para po sa akin, ito po yung utterances or significant statements na nagpa-reach, nagpapayama ng inyong qualitative study. Next slide, please. Okay, so that's the, the raw data in qualitative study. Okay, so you will organize, okay, keeps on reading, perusal, then you classify, ano ba tong binasa ko? Alam mo ba ito? Do you, do you really understand or reading without understanding? Then you synthesize, then uh, it contributes to the final report. You have to report, okay? Ganun po ang mangyayari. Maging proposal man and finish, you have to report that one. Then uh, what will happen is that you will uh, take time to rest also. Pahuway yung ka or uh, ano ba yun sa Tagalog um, pahuway? Mag take time to rest. Ma kailangan mo magpahinga. Okay? Kailangan mo magpahinga. Iha ipahinga ang yung utak dahil para sa sa'yo uh, bright na kaayo ka. Or you're the most intelligent na yun siguro. Time. <clears throat> okay. You have already your contribution to the final report. Kumustahin mo rin ang yung mga panel. Kung okay pa ba sila. All right. Okay, so don't for, do not forget this is a spiral. Do not forget uh, do not be afraid with qualitative because uh in in quantitative po numbers po kapag ikaw ay na, nasipiat or nagkamali, okay? Manual po, kapag manual po whatever uh, type of statistical treatment kapag na uh, nagkamali ka sa pag-substitute ng formula ng statistics ako. Mali na po lahat para sa akin, including the interpretation because we rely on numbers. Objective po kasi ang quantitative. Pero kapag uh, qualitative, na ko, marami pong ano yun, desires, marami pong mga pagnanasa na pwede mo i-integrate dito. Kapag ikaw ay sinampal ng ilang beses, yan po ay quantitative. Pero kapag sinasabing gaano kasarap ang sampal, yan po ay maraming answer, maraming sagot kung gaano kasarap ang ikaw ay masampal, qualitative po yon. So that's the, the metaphor, that's the thing that I use to my students when we quantify and then <laughs> when we quantify and teach my students on how to do this and how to do that. Okay, so that they will also be uh, enjoying with your class. Okay, and do not for, uh, do, do not forget also that there is no perfect research. Everything that we failed 
to do, whether you like it or not, with the, whether you did your best, I did my best, but I guess my best wasn't good enough. Sino bang komentar niyan? You have to recommend that one. I-recommend mo. Dahil marami pa, marami pa pong mga successors. You have many successors. Many researchers are awaiting and still waiting until now because they are hungry of knowledge. So it needs to, to quench their thirst of knowledge just to let them know that research is an enjoying activity. Next slide, please. Okay, so after data analysis, uh, to validate hypothesis three, this is phenomenological. Okay, so if, if example there is the lived experience. Ano ba yung pamumuhay ng mga research teacher mula nang nagsimula ang senior high school? Paano sila nag-adjust? yung coping mechanisms nila, ano ang nangyari sa kanilang buhay, patuloy pa ba, kahit lubog na sa mga loan, patuloy pa rin ang teacher. Ito po ang ano, gulugod ng ekonomiya. So samples questions of qualitative phenomenology is lived experience. What are the highlights of the lived experiences of high school teachers tasked to teach research? Okay? So lahat ng kanilang mga karanasan sa buhay, mga istorya, okay? And what for them is the meaning of these challenges and experience of teaching research. So while you are interviewing, recording po sa qualitative, okay, always underline the things that are repeating. Kapag um, pabalik-balik na yung kanilang mga statement, saturated na po ang data. And that's the time you can make already your hypothesis, your assumptions, and then make a theory. For basic education, dahan-dahan lang po. That's one of the challenges for uh, research teachers, practical research teachers in senior high school, how to teach basically the students without uh, fully uh, applying the style of college. Yan po ang pagkakaiba. Next, please. Yeah. So this is uh, an example of uh, the Kolaichi strategy for chapter three of my, uh, chapter four rather of my research, the Kolaichi strategy. So for this, uh, the first column is lined up. Ganun po ang format namin sa Cebu Normal University. Manual coding po, yan lang po ang ma-afford ko. Okay, it depends also on your capacity and your knowledge if you know how to use in vivo. Because as uh, quantitative, if you know how to use SPSS, or manual coding or packet calculator. Then the significant statements. So you have there the informant number one. Ses session number one is si Jesusa. Yung Jesusa po ay uh, nickname lamang or uh, alias lamang. Hindi talaga. No? Ganun po sa ethics of research. Pero ako, tunay na Rinaldo po ako. They call me Teacher Ray when I was in uh, private school. Teacher Ray. Pero ako po ay tunay na Rinaldo. Ray. Hari ng mga... Kung sa tawag, ana, anong tawag doon? Okay, so Mr. Moral. And so I highlighted. I use yellow, uh, green. Okay? So that I will know that they are common. Or to establish the commonality. All right. So those uh, colored statements are what we call the the things that you have to capture, and then you include that one in your uh, discussion during the discussion. Okay, during the interpretation of data. Next, please. So uh, these are examples po that I have already published chapter one of my dissertation. Nagbago na po ang title Generating the Theory on Research Teaching a Metasynthesis. So this is uh, from Asian Intellect. Kung i-apply po natin sa Scopus, uh, we have to pay more than 4,000. My chapter two here, Teacher's Attributes and Student's Research Productivity from our uh, Journal of Creative Writing in Bangladesh. This one is in Tarlac. I think Tarlac from Jules Kalma. This one is in Bangladesh. I already observed. Receive also the certificate of publication. Next slide, please. Okay. So, so previously the that was the front page. This one are the 
certificate of publication. For research teachers who are vying for higher position, do not forget to keep this. Ito po ay isa sa mga passport ng promotion. Di ba, Sir Richard? Okay, kung bakit tayo naging MT, isa po ito sa mga dahilan. Certificate of publication po. Next slide, please. Uh, yes, one. So the passion and commitment in teaching research a meta synthesis this is a Cuban academic journal. So the, the right side is the uh, certificate. I, I received an award. Kaya pinos ko agad. Hindi po. Uh, ano po? It's not that easy to make uh, or keeps on rewriting or revising your research. Kaya po, I'm very proud na meron po akong achievement. Next slide, please. So after this passion and commitment publication, uh, I also apply this in the basic education, specifically in my grade 11 students, repeat and duplicate. This is the essence of a research teacher, systematic review of research-driven pedagogy in the new normal modalities. So I still use the same uh, strategy or approach metasynthesis, but in a new normal modality. Anon po? So asynchronous and synchronous. Okay. So I will be uh, sharing this on December 15. We will have a research summit in the division of Cebu City and in the regional office also in Lahub. And I receive a certificate of appreciation for this. So I'm very proud of myself. Congratulations to me. Congratulations to me. Dahil hindi po basta-basta uh, ang paggawa ng research. So, single uh, author po ako, then back up with DepEd. But in, 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 in our school, we, I conducted a learning action cell for my uh, colleagues, senior high school. Then we have focus group discussion also. And the respondents, I have 30 students respondents for this. And the output of this during the implementation, I also submitted this to EdCore. Okay, next please. So uh, one of the activities uh, that I use for my students in qualitative is that uh, I ask them to look for your partner or here in, in our session, or as research consultants, ask two people to describe their perception of preventive health care. So ano ba yung preventive health care sa kasalukuyan dahil meron na tayong Omicron pagkatapos ng kay Delta and what it means in their daily lives. So we will pull all the narrative descriptions and develop a coding scheme to organize the reasons. So we need uh, ample time for this and then we'll ask further questions is, what are the major themes that emerge? Ganun. So I think this there is no wrong or right answer, but the teacher as a research teacher should always be there, monitor the student's progress. That's our that's our rule to facilitate the students. Okay, as a teacher, you're always inside the classroom, my pandemic man, oh voila, because whether you, wherever you go. God is watching us from a distance. Next slide, please. So let me end my talk with uh, an adage from Philip Adu, that because this is qualitative training that uh, coding is like using a Lego brick to make an art. If you have experienced okay, a Lego, yung laruan at Lego, it always starts with using a meaningless species. Ano ba yung gamit? Color coding is the simplest way to highlight similar codes. Yes. Yes, po. Very true, Ma'am Castillo. Color coding po. Meaningless po ang isa sa mga parts. Okay? But it creates a meaningful piece of art. Of Philip Addo. And I hope you learned something from me. But still, for me, I am a simple, a plain teacher. I am learning also from you. If only I could part uh, join or participate during the six. 30 Wednesday or Thursday, but sad to say, I have a class in my college at that time. Uh, pasensya na po si Richard. Uh, 
I have a class on 6.30, I, I, but I attended once po and I really love the conversation. Okay, and next slide, please. Uh, I'm giving you the suggested readings. Okay, so you can ask for it from our uh, co-chairperson or to Sir Richard, there are suggested readings. You can Google my name and about qualitative, especially Cresswell. And I thank you. Next slide, please. Thank you very much for your participation. God bless the Philippines. Thank you very much, Pope. There you go. Thank you so much for the sharing, po, Dr. Reynaldo Moral. I myself, po, I, I was able to catch uh, meaningful and useful insights because I am currently working with my dissertation, which is qualitative. So, marami po rin akong na, nakuha na pwedeng magamit po to further improve yung pong manuscript ko and yung method. And because of that, we would like to award you now uh, this Certificate of Recognition. I think ako na po magbabasa, no? This is actually, you, let me read po the citation. Uh, at EdCore Educational Research Center, Santa Ana, Pampanga, Philippines, present this Certificate of Recognition to Dr. Reynaldo V. Moral, one of our research consultant dito po sa EdCore, for sharing his invaluable time and expertise as resource speakers, speaker in the series of national capacity building seminars on research writing for research consultants of EdCor Educational Research Center held from October 20, 2021, which will be until March 2, 2022. And signed by Po, the following, Dr. Ian Dinares, National Deputy Consultant for Research Publication and Training, Dr. A.C. Lagman, National Consultant for Research Publication and Trainings, and of course, Dr. Richard D. Sanchez, Head Research Consultant. Congratulations po and thank you so much, sir. Thank you po, sir. Thank you, sir. Adrian Tamayo. Okay. So we have already reached po ang ating conclusion. Pero bago po yan, uh, we would like to entertain some questions. No? Kung pwede po or possible. We stop sharing ko muna po. Medyo nagloko po yung aking camera naman ngayon. <laughs> so pasensya na po. Well, I could see po kasi a while ago questions from uh, Dr. Jordan Liego, our editor-in-chief. Uh, siguro babasahin ko na lang po. No? Uh, Dr. Jordan Liego asked actually three questions agad. No? Sabi niya, Doctor, is your review protocol registered to Prisma? I'm not pretty much sure ano po yung Prisma. Actually, first time ko nga po nabasa ito. Then another is, how many researchers validated the articles included in your study? And then, is it possible to write a review type research by one researcher? Yun po yung kanyang mga tanong. Sir. Okay. Uh, let me start with the first question po. Uh, can you hear me? Yes sir? po, loud and clear po. Uh, what was the first question, sir? Um, is your review protocol registered to Prisma? Uh, Prisma stands for, ano po yung Prisma? Because uh, my, are you dealing with the dissertation or the published journal po? Actually, it's my also first time to hear Prisma. Maybe Lagi. if Dr. Jordan is here, could you please uh, give us an idea po? Kung ano because, uh, yes, Sir Jordan, because well, we are also learning from each other what is Prisma. Iba, research po is institutionalization and maybe uh, that could be a, a great help if uh, PRISMA stands for preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analysis hindi po uh, dumaan sa PRISMA yung aking pag-aaral po sa dissertation or sa published po sa PRISMA because if only there is a there was a time or a way or an, or an encouragement of my mentor of course i have to do that that's why it's first time for me and i'm very thankful that meron palang prisma na dadaan sa masusing pagbubusisi or scrutiny under scrutiny po yung uh, research and that is the thing that uh, we have i need to be remember thank you very much po sir hindi po dumaan sir 
Well, the next question po is, how many researchers validated the articles included in your study? Yun po yun. How many researchers validated my article? Yung, uh, my publication po, there are uh, some of these are for free po. And uh, I've just received it uh, through email, something like that. And uh, all I want is to be published this one since it was 2019. And uh, for Cubahan Academic Journal, journal uh, there were three po. There were three who validated the, the, the journal before it was published. Pero yung, yung sa uh, DepEd, uh, parang conference, pero it didn't happen with a conference. But I received a certificate of uh, publication. Ganun po. So, because I am uh, looking into or really wanted to learn about a, a predatory journal, because in depth, it, it's not that really mandated I, in a higher education, but I am bringing the name of the Department of Education because I'm a full time. Uh, working. Yung mga consultants po natin na nandito, you will take your oath later with us. There's uh, mga consultants po. Congratulations sa mga consultants. So yun po ang aking sagot sa Cubahan Academic Journal po and yung sa Asian Intellect po, dumaan po sa evaluation po talaga. It keeps on revising. The rest po keeps on revising but I transferred it to other uh, public publishing company. So that's, that is the thing that uh, I I really want to learn kung what type of journal that is really predatory or the type of journal that has a quality because, because I haven't experienced uh, using Scopus as a database in my uh, study. I hope I, I will answer your questions. And the third question, sir, is... Uh, is it possible to write a review type research by one researcher? Yun po yung last question. Oh. Yes, it did happen to me, sir. Uh, ako lang po ang sumulat ng uh, isa. Nag-iisang ako po sa metasynthesis. So, sa, so, if I did it in my dissertation, how much more in my own classroom setting? Uh, basic research po, pero parang classroom, parang action research din po because there is an intervention. I created a creative plan. Then I use also... Uh, I provided activities for the students, something like that. Uh, yan po ang kagustuhan ng DepEd. What qualities? Uh, yan po, it, uh, it could be one dahil naranasan ko po. The disadvantage of having for me is if you have a partner, they, they might relegate on you. Parang aasa lang sila sa iyo. So that's why we have to teach them on how to learn by themselves. Medyo cautious po tayo sa review articles po. Oh, yes, sir. You have to be cautious po sa review article as long as it is closely related, of course, to your topic and it has a sense. So in my end, I separated the quantitative published journal because I am planning to make a meta-analysis. That's my next plan. Okay, All I need is just a matter of time management po dahil marami na pong pumapasok sa ating isipan. We need at least three researchers po to write such po. Yes, uh, I, I love to participate po. Sir Liego, ano pong gagawin natin dyan? Okay. Okay po. Well, we need at least three researchers po to write such po. Oh, yun sa, I, 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 I'm not yes, it is the highest it. level of evidence. Yes, po, it is the highest level. Actually, sa experience, we were eight kabarkada or kabaro, but only two graduated in PhD. The rest, uh, na, naabuta na sila ng pandemic hanggang sa nag stillness na po. But they survive and keeps on uh, studying. So I advise them to keep on fighting with the battle. Ganun lang po. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, actually, it's good to hear that 
uh, there are universities nowadays who are accepting systematic reviews as dissertation na. So, yes, sir. It's actually trending nowadays yung mm. gawa po ng systematic review. Natawa nga po ako sa comment ni ano ni Sir Richard kanina. Ngayon ko lang nabasa. Nako tatlo agad ang tanong coming from our editor in chief sabi niya. <laughs> so yun. Uh, baga na ano ko lang. Well, meron naman po tayong affirmation na nare-receive kanina sir when you were sharing your insights no. Gaya po ni ano ni Ma'am Mary Jane at saka ni Sir Richard. And then uh, meron po tanong dito si Ma'am Michelle Jamelin Dulay. Sabi po niya, how did you validate your emergent teams doon po sa inyong dissertation siguro yan. Okay, thank you for the question. To validate the emerging team is that you have to consult always your advisor, consult the chairman, and other members of the panel if they have time. That's one thing. Then another thing is that based on my readings, you can also validate that one if there are experts of the field if there are experts of the field. So one of the panelists that I consulted was my external panelist in the University of Cebu, Dr. De Los Santos. Po. So she was one of the, the, the one that I asked to validate my theory. Kahit na, kahit na, na siya grocery po, siya pinuntahan ko talaga sa, sa malls and then we talk about it, something like that. Gan, ganun po. So you yourself can validate, but uh, as to what extent, ganun po ang mangyayari because this is qualitative. No? Marami pong lalabas sa iyong uh, utok, uh, otak okay? uh, sa puso at damdamin ng tao. They're qualitative. You mean you use face, content, uh, face, uh, content validity. Uh, it could be like that in a form po. Something like that. They're, they're qualitative po. They are uh, Dr. Susima Panyaris is known as the queen of qualitative research in Cebu Normal University. Kahit na retired na po siya, she was known there as the queen of qualitative. So uh, I believe in myself. Okay, She also believed in me, something like that. Uh, and the question is, what will happen to the theory? If everything is doubtful, Okay, what will happen? So, so for me, um, it will be more helpful if I was... Uh, share this to my co-workers. You can also validate. Uh, yes, ma'am. Let's see. You can also validate the emerging teams by going back to the significant statements. Then you validate the final teams by going back to your informant. I think informants. we refer to that yes. as members checking then. No? Ah, Modena siya. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Go back to your informants. Okay, so my informants in our school, I have... Uh, four informants in our school. Maad ko lang po. Well, we need at least three researchers po to avoid bias po. Ah, and it will add to the rigor of the paper. Yes, thank you po. That's one of the things that uh, Dr. Panyaris added po. That it could be part of the rigor. So, yung researchers po ay part of the panel. Uh, face content, uh, face content validity is for quantity po as far. As I know, uh, meron ding uh, metasynthesis quantitative because I when I quantify when I quantify the the repeating words, of course, uh, para po sa akin, uh, it could also be part or possible according to Ma'am Dulay, Ma'am Michelle, it can be used in qualitative too. Yes, thank you, ma'am. can also be I, I used think in there is just a difference in terminologies when it comes to mm. uh, the face validity, content validity. Mm. It's just a matter of term, no? Mm. Depende po kasi minsan. Uh, because when I, 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 yes, I experience po validation, when I validate, pero quantitative po yun, how to validate, I, of course, I started with the statement of the problem, then the hypothesis, and uh, the content also, and then I, I directly as the tool of my uh, client. Ganon po. Another way to validate your emerging team aside from expert validators. Ah, subject participants is another way to validate your emerging team aside from expert. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. I will apply that uh, during Papaka my... Papakarich, sir, ng sharing, no? Oh. Yung, 
yung oh. ano kasi sir yung tinatawag natin sa qualitative kasi unang problema dyan is yung subjectiveness ng researcher mm-hmm. therefore we really have uh-huh. to undergo yung sinishare ng mga kasama sa chat mm-hmm. which are actually true na dapat talaga ganon to, to ensure mm-hmm. that our interpretation of the data from the participants mm-hmm. or informants is uh-huh. really what we are capturing. Yes sir. But actually sir, uh, in my school only we talk about my my product and then I shared it to them. This could that is that considered as part part of the validation. But it's uh, I already defended na graduate na po ako. To avoid bias and valid team is getting group research doing a quality, but it will be difficult for a solo researcher in a quality. One is under other eyes theory data team. So uh uh gayon kulang po nalama na ito gaano po kalaki ang responsibilidad o gaano kalaki ang trabaho kapag nag-iisa ka lang sa paggawa ng ganitong uri ng uh, qualitative metasynthesis po pala. Uh, that's how I uh, observe one of the panelists po that she needs to, research director po siya, she needs to study more, uh, study nagbabasa po siya ulit para malaman kung ano po talaga ang katuturan ng metasynthesis dahil sa masalimuot po na mga bahagi ng metasynthesis. Depende po ito sa kakayahan ng uh, researcher and also the time, time management po. That's one of the problem of uh, uh, researchers. Yung mga uh, contento, na sa, contento sa kanilang units or car na lang contento na sila ganun po so one needs other eyes to review the data teams ah, okay my thank salute thank you so please. much po sir thank you. thank you so much thank uh, you also we, sir we will now proceed to the next part of our session for tonight which is the oath taking of our new uh, newly recruited a uh, new kapamilya research consultant Uh, which will be facilitated by Sir Cyril De La Fuente. And later on, uh, we will have one of our research consultants for the acceptance. Sige po, go ahead, Sir Cyril. Good evening, everyone. May I request the, the research consultants who are going to take their oath of office for them to open their camera and their audio to be unmuted. And then... Please, you may please raise your right hand and repeat after me, please. I, please take your name. I, do solemnly and sincerely promise. Do solemnly and sincerely promise. Swear and declare. Swear and declare. That I will truly and faithfully. That I truly and faithfully. And to the best of my skills. And to the best of my skills. Knowledge and abilities. Knowledge and abilities. Execute the powers. Execute the powers. And trust reposed in me. Trust reposed in me. As EdCore Educational Research Centers. As EdCore Educational Centers. State the position, please. Research consultant. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. May I have uh, engineer uh, Balanon to uh, accept po yung for the acceptance speech po tayo. Uh, yeah, so... Hi, I'm Emmanuel Ben. I'm currently with the University of Philippines Diamond College of Law as a structural civil engineering advisor to their structure and development department. So I was working on one of my prototypes when I came across this research post about an upcoming international uh, multidisciplinary conference, not going to lie. It caught my attention because of how, how active the community is with the research events online. So me being a huge R&D freak, I think it's inevitable for me and not to join this research community. Uh, I truly believe that I'm not the only one here who experienced this huge enthusiasm on research and development. So I believe with these first few steps, with this community, this community, uh, there is so much to learn and discover. 
Lastly, I want to thank the organic, organic, organizers of this organization, uh, appreciating the wonderful work they are doing in implementing and embracing the culture of research to our diverse community. So before I end my acceptance speech, I want to end it with a quote from our from one of the greatest minds in the 21st century, which is Stephen Hawking. And his quote goes like this, there should be no boundaries, human endeavors, we are all different. That's why, uh, however bad life may seem, there's always something you can do and succeed at. Everyone, thank you for having me tonight and may you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Congrats, engineer. Thank you. There you go. Congratulations. And finally po, no, I really appreciate yung pong sharing po ng ating resource speaker for tonight. I, I myself have gained a lot, uh, a lot of insights which are very useful po as I complete my dissertation. Nasa final stage na po ako ng dissertation and I really appreciate our session for tonight. So with that, uh, let us now call on our co-chair for the closing message. Uh, candidate or soon to be Dr. Sir Samboy D. Franco for the closing message. Sir Po? Sir, can you po, sir? Yes Po, loud and clear. Okay. Uh, once again, good evening everyone to our dear research advocates. I am honored and delighted to deliver the concluding remarks uh, for one of the series of the National Capacity Building Seminars on research writing for research consultants with the topic, learning from others as the beginning of a relevant investigation, sharing of a completed qualitative study organized by EDCOR. First of all, I would like to thank the team for their enthusiastic and dedicated work as they have, their, uh, they have put their hearts and souls to make this event happen. I'm extremely pleased that the seminar went well and was attended by research enthusiasts and experts. Indeed, the session was filled with insightful contents. You know, at EdCore, we are very pleased, uh, we are very happy to be at service by providing platforms like this one for establishing a dialogue and expert networks that we are convinced and uh, that we are convinced that are useful for the academic writings. But even more than that, we would like to see a practical application and concrete steps made at different levels. As we know, one swallow does not make spring and we need numerous followers and a concerted effort to bring out the critical mass of change into our academe as useful practices. Here, I would like again to reiterate our appreciation for a continued support of the EdCord to this initiative. Congratulations to our speaker, Dr. Reynaldo V. Moral, for giving us relevant information on topics related to the qualitative meta synthesis. Kanindot sa inyo ang gibuhat nga papel, sir. Dako kaayo ang amo kalipay sa Hindi niyo ang pagpaningkamot na makabukot kini nga meta-analysis. Dagang salamat kayo, sir. And Thank you, sir. And extend our gratitude uh, to all of you who participated in this seminar. Thank you so much. And to officially close, let me wish all of us a lot of energy and to say some shared trust and resolve on our way towards achieving a better future for all through academic writings. Magandang gabi po. Yon, there you go. Thank you so much, Sir Samboy D. Franco. Napaka- Ganda ng kanyang closing message. At ngayon ko lang napansin, Sir Ray, uh, Dr. Reynaldo, nakakataas ng moral <laughs> ang iyong last name. <laughs> na po tayo, Thank you, Sir. No? Thank you so much po. We really appreciate po yung sharing nyo for today. And of course, uh, hindi po mawawala ang inyong feedback. So we would like to invite you to accomplish po ang ating uh, evaluation link po. You can actually scan the QR code or just simply copy po yung link. Sa invitation po natin, meron din po tayong evaluation link doon para clickable po ng ating Google Form. So, huwag niyo pong kalilimutan ng ating evaluation link. Your uh, feedback matters to EdCore very much. This will help us uh, to further improve the services po na ino-offer po ni EdCore. And then, kung gusto niyo pong mag-avail din ng t-shirt, kumontak lang po kayo. At ito po ay para sa ating mga scholars ng EdCore. No? We really encourage everybody to uh, purchase po ang ating EdCore t-shirt. No? So, meron po bang ano, sasabihin si Sir Richard bago po tayo magtapos, Sir? Wala na po, Sir. Wala na po. Okay. Thank you so much po. With that, I, uh, I would like to say goodbye po and keep safe po. Uh, nandyan na po ang ano po, Omicron. <laughs> meron pong monitor ngayon, so wag po tayong magpakampante. Very 
very ano po very important na equip po natin yung ating uh, safety uh, thank you so much po and good night po <music>